Howdy folks! Today I would like to teach you a nice easy method to use in order to find either x or t intercepts of a particular function. So the function we're given here is c of t is equal to 4t raised to the fourth plus 12t raised to the third minus 40t squared. Now what does it mean by x intercepts or t intercepts? So pretend you have a function, it doesn't really matter what it is, but pretend this is the function. Okay. If this is the function, and we're plotting x or t along the horizontal axis, and we're plotting the y or the function's value, in this case, c of t, along the vertical axis, which should be, should be the case, by the way. The x or the t intercepts will be then the locations where it crosses that particular axis, or aka the horizontal axis. Okay. Now, it turns out that even in this picture, you know two unique, or one unique thing, excuse me, about those two unique points. You know one thing that those points have in common. What is it? What is it? What do you think? Right. Did you say that you know the function's value? Did you say you know the y value? Did you say you know the c of t value of those points? If you said something along those lines, you would be absolutely correct. You know that it's going to be zero. Remember, coordinates are always going to be written as x comma y. In this case, the problem is the t is the x and the c of t is the y. All right, but you know that the function's value of these points, any point that crosses that horizontal axis will be, the function value will be zero, the y value will be zero, okay? In other words, y will be equal to, and it's the same thing in this problem as just the c of t, I'm defining it, and that should be equal to zero. So when you think about x or t intercepts, what you want to think about is you want to think about, okay, I have my function, and somehow this side, I have to find the t values that cause this thing to become zero, okay? So write that down. So we're basically going to have 0 here. That's going to be equal to 4t raised to the 4th plus 12t cubed minus 40. Oops. Minus, minus 40t. What's going on? 40t squared. Okay. Now, just look at it for a second. What does t have to be in order for this thing to become 0? What do you think? 0, right? What do you think? If t is 0 in here, this whole thing 0 of t is... What happened to the t over there? Well, there's the t. Okay, sorry it disappeared somehow. Sorry about that. But if the t over here is going to be equal to 0, let me make that a little bit neater. All right, if the t in here is 0, that whole thing 0. If the t in here is 0, that whole thing 0. 0 plus 0 minus 0 is going to be 0, right? Everything's going to be 0. So you actually already know a value for t. It should be equal to 0. That's actually one of the t intercepts, okay, when t is equal to 0. That's going to be the... So this function will somehow pass through the origin, basically. Because when t is 0, the function's value is 0. That means it goes through the origin somehow. Okay? And we'll see that later. Now, from there, it becomes a little harder. If I said, are there any other values for t? You might say, well, no. Well, it might not be apparent. Right? You might not be able to see other values for t, but there might be. Now, this is where the algebra comes in hand. Okay? What you want to do first is you want to be try and factor out some common terms here. Okay, now we can do this in a couple of different ways, but I'm looking to see what terms all three of these have in common. I know that I can pull out a t squared, right, from every term. I also know that I can pull out a 4 from every term. Now you don't have to do that at this stage, it can be done later. But I know I can pull this out from every term. And then what I would be left with is I'd be left with just, that would just be t squared. This would now be 3t. Okay, and this term would now be minus 10, just 10, right? Just 10. Cool. Now, the reason why we factor is because I, I, get, I get this into a structure where I can start to find my, my roots, so to speak, where I could find the t values. Now watch, if this term were, were somehow to be equal to zero, were to become zero, what is this whole side must become? I don't care what this is, but what must this side become? Well, if this is 0, 0 multiplied by anything is just 0. So that whole thing will become 0, and that will be a true statement, right? Cool. Or what happens if this thing turns out to be 0 inside that parenthesis? Well, I know if this whole thing becomes 0 somehow, that multiplied by whatever the heck this thing is, I could care less what it is, but it'll also be equal to 0, right? So I realize that I really have two conditions upon which this function could equal zero. Now what you do is armed with that logic, you start writing the math. In other words, what you were saying is that 4t squared, if that only equals zero somehow, the whole function would become zero. And you were also saying t squared plus 3t 
minus 10. If that thing could become zero somehow or equal to zero, then this whole term on the right-hand side would be zero and that would be a true statement. So now what you've done is you set up two math equations for yourself to solve. Now watch. How do I solve this one? Can I solve this math equation for t? Of course you can, right? Divide out the four from both sides. You've got t squared is equal to zero. Square root both sides. You've got t is equal to zero. But that's already what you told me, right? Logically. Now what about this side? Well, it's a quadratic. Now watch. I'm going to use my calculator real quick, real or very quickly, uh, to get to get my uh, to get my roots. All right. Um, Oh, and by the way, if you want to program your calculator for this, please check out the link in the description below. I'm going to leave you a video, all right? You'll be able to do it in like three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. I forgot how long it is, but it's very quick, very quick. So program. So execute your quad program, okay? Go down in that description. Find the find the video and program it now, okay? Uh, so what you, your A value. So if you go back to your function, the A value is the number in front of the squared. That's A, so it's a 1. This is going to be B, it's a positive 3, and C is going to be a negative 10. So just plug it in, watch. 1 is A, enter. B, 3, enter. C, negative 10, enter. And yeah, there they are, right? There they are. So your T value should be equal to now a 2, and your T should also be equal to negative 5. It actually solved it for you, okay? It solved it for you already. Now, Let's say you're like, okay, that's great, but you know, I uh, my my teacher's going to want to see work, and I, I don't disagree. I think that's important. So how do we do it? Well, remember, to solve any quadratic equation, you're thinking about two things. You're thinking about two numbers that multiply to negative ten, and then you're thinking about two numbers that add up to positive three. They have to satisfy both conditions. So what two numbers multiply to negative ten, but yet will add up to a positive three? And I'm thinking to myself, well, what about negative five and a positive two? Well, they would multiply to be negative 10, and they would add to be po uh, Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm thinking too far. Sorry, I got, I got caught up on the numbers up there. I'm just seeing if you're paying attention. Just do a little whoop. Actually, I'm just going to switch the numbers. Do a little whoop. A little flipperooski. A little flipperooski. Okay. That looks better now. That's why you're always checking yourself. I did that on purpose. I swear. So this is going to be a minus 10. And then when they add up together, that's now a positive 3. So those are going to be your factors now. So you put a T little, you know, put a T there, you put a T here, right? You put a T everywhere. A lot of bedtime stories I've been reading. A lot of it. <laughs> realizing I'm rhyming words without even really thinking about it. And yeah, your life definitely changes when you have a kid or kids. Yeah. Anyway, so how do we now solve this? Okay, how do we solve this? So we use the same logic actually we did over here. That's the benefit. Okay, same logic. If this term inside this parenthesis, if only that was equal to zero somehow, if or if only that could become zero, then this whole term on the left-hand side is equal to zero, and that would satisfy it. Same thing about this. If only this term could become zero, then this whole side, when multiplied together, would be equal to zero, and that would be sat or that would satisfy this statement. So now you can set this up and you can break it this up, and this is why you do it, right? You might say, "I always do it this way," but I never realized why. Well, this is why you're setting up two example questions for yourself, okay? So how, when you solve this for t, what happens? You add the 2 to both sides, so t is going to be equal to a positive 2. And then when you solve this for t, you're going to subtract the 5 from both sides, so t is going to be equal to negative 5. And wait a minute, that's what we said it should be also before by using the program in the calculator. So guess what? you got three answers here. Okay, That's where the algebra comes into play. Now you might say, okay, that's all fine and dandy, but I, I really still don't see it. Okay, so look at it visually. Go to your y equals, type in now. Uh, 4 t squared. By the way, if you don't have this calculator, check out a link in the description below. Okay, I'll leave you a link in case you'd want to get it. So 4, this is going to be x uh, raised to the 4th. Then hit over. Then plus, now 12 x. i got to use x instead of t because the calculator doesn't recognize the t. So uh, everywhere you see a t, you just substitute it with x. All right? So 40 minus 40. And then x squared. i got to go back and double check because I was talking at the same time. So it looks like we are good to go. Great. So hit graph. Okay. So this is good. Let's take this and let's analyze it. Now this is the graph. Now you might say, okay, that looks a little strange, but you got to imagine, right? I mean, the graph is going to continue on up here forever. It's going to come down, do a little loop-de-loo at some point, come back up, go down, do a little loop-de-loo at some point, and then go on up forever. Now the important thing is where does it touch or intersect that x-axis? Well, it looks like three points. Looks like it, right? Three points. Okay. What are their values? Each tick mark represents 1, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. When you count to the left, right, you go negative. So negative 5. Oh, wait a minute. Right. 
That's the T value we said. Okay. Well, this looks like it's at the origin. Oh, wait a minute. That's what we said. And wait a minute. One, two, positive two. Oh, look at that. There it is visually, right? There it is visually. That's how this works. And if you're still not convinced, right, you can go to your table. So go now, hit second table. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit to try to get all the values on the table. Now, remember, we defined the t-intercepts on this, you know, by using the calculator, now I have to call it x-intercepts. But we, we define them to be the values of x when the y value is equal to zero. So if these are the locations on your table where the y value is equal to zero, then the corresponding x values will be your x-intercepts. Negative 5, 0, and 2. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in. I really do hope this video helped. And if it did, if you can like and subscribe, that helps our channel tremendously. But even better yet, if you can recommend our channel uh, to your friends, that would be awesome. Friends or classmates, either one, right? You don't have to be too friendly to recommend our channel. Actually, you might become friends if you recommend our channel. So uh, I really do appreciate it very much. And uh, yeah, I look forward to helping you with more problems. And by the way, we don't have only mathematics here. We have physics chemistry as well. We got a whole lot of other stuff coming out. We got thousands and thousands of videos out there. So check out our, uh, check out our channel. Okay. The Glazer Tutoring Company. Thanks again.